David is a very special guest because he is the first repeat guest. It was supposed to be Renell Bruder from last week, but the catastrophic weather closed down all city, I guess, agencies such as this one and as well the schools. It was the first time kids were off school in eight years, or the first time the TDSB shut down in eight years. Really? Pretty, yeah. Huh. Isn't that amazing? So that's like a about full it. Shut, shut down across yeah, the yeah. City. Kid didn't know TDSB school was open wow. last Tuesday. I don't remember being that bad. It wasn't that bad. Are we getting a bit soft when it comes to weather? I was curious. I talked. That's maybe our first topic. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's have that. Since we actually don't really have anything to talk about today, let's focus on that. Here, I'm going to take off my earphones. Um, I had a discussion with one of the other parents the other day. And I thought, gee, I wonder if our um, reaction to the weather last week, mm-hmm. or maybe our overreaction, was due to the impact of social media and um, sensationalizing little problems. So did we overreact in a way that was out of kilter with what we should have reacted to and is that an is that a conditioned response that's been increased over time because of our reactionary behavior which is often driven by social media and it, it it sometimes feels like there's so much information that it's hard it's hard not to react when everyone's telling you uh, there's been a warning. There's a warning of something right, coming. Right. As opposed to just waking up and saying, oh, it's snowing outside. Oh, it's really <laughs> cold. I need to adjust accordingly. Um, Keep going. So I think uh, <laughs> sometimes when I, when I speak to my mother, she's like, did yeah. you read the, she read the weather report? Right. I was like, no, I'm just going to go outside and figure out what I need in yeah. order to <laughs> get through whatever Mother Nature is throwing at me. Yes, as that, opposed to the <laughs> the excessive planning and the yeah, shutdowns yeah, yeah, and the freakouts, right. as opposed like just get to get there. I mean, plan. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But react and adju- adjust as opposed to um, like get all caught up in the. It's like an overreaction. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think right. I mean, we live in Canada. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be cold here. The weather is. It's supposed to be snowy, mm-hmm. and yet we can't function when there's a lot of snow like that. <laughs> There has been, so I play hockey with, um, it's funny, we have a bunch of old guys and then their kids. So there's like a 30 some odd year gap between (laughs) half the team. Anyhow, the older guys have been pissed and adamant about how horrible the snow removal has been this year. And it's never been so bad and who knows what the heck's going on. But it does seem that we've lost a little knack for dealing with the irritation of the weather i don't know what it is yeah and does how does that relate to our societal inability to deal with conflict and strife and frustration and etc which is all under the umbrella of mental health so okay so it's like this little pinprick a bit of weather yeah and a freak out. Yeah. And that's, you're saying there's actually like an analogy to be made with how we deal with a whole host of challenges in our life, in our lives. Yeah, you're absolutely. Yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, Something's yeah. uncomfortable and it's a meltdown. Yeah. Not going to school, I shut everything down, don't do anything. That's like emotional shutdown in reaction to a bit of adversity, a bit of conflict, something getting your way, an obstacle. Yeah. There's, there is, yeah. And I guess in fairness to the school boards. Yes. If the weather had turned out the way it was anticipated, it would have been really bad. So, right. you know what I mean? Okay. So, the idea was that the roads would have been a sheet of ice, basically. And if yeah. you have Kids. literally hundreds of thousands or millions of people driving around right. uh, during rush hour on that day, it could have been really bad. Right. So, I think that was the intention, which my son loved it. <laughs> he got to play. <laughs> you know what's so funny is... Two people we know two people that just went off to school without checking their email or anything. Which is you know Unheard the of. fact yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fact that they didn't check their email before going to taking their kids to school. What's wrong with you know? <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Anyhow, so uh two people didn't and then 
uh, my wife managed to speak to one of them before they got to school. And then the other one, it's funny, we called them to ask if their son wanted to have a play date with our son. Mm. And the mom was like, oh, um, you know, her husband had already left with the three kids. They walked to school. Wow. So he walked to school with his three kids. So they have three kids all under, you know, eight years old. Shrekking through the snow. Just yeah, just there. and just dragging, you know, all the... It's not an easy task to get out of the house in the morning all the right. time with little kids. And right. so, you know, <laughs> the poor guy, you know, drags his kids to school to find out all the doors are locked. No one's around. He's kind of wondering what's going on here. Anyhow, it was kind of funny. So his son came over to our house and played all day. And oh, nice. it was nice for the kids. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you survived. Somehow. Somehow. Yeah, See, we all yeah, end yeah. up surviving. <laughs> we do. And we're usually better as a result of mm -hmm. that survival. Right. Um, but yeah, so we were talking about how our societal inability to handle stress and difficult situations, mm -hmm. uh, I guess what the relationship between the individual and the society and how it's so connected slash interesting, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is a very Canadian topic. You I guess so, yeah. Weather, <laughs> yeah. Right? Just like mm, the weather. Complain about the weather. <laughs> yeah. And then... But I think there is, there is something to be said about resilience in the face, especially as we move towards, uh, you know, the extreme weather yeah. stuff, what we hear a lot about. Yeah, yeah. How do we as a society, how do we as individuals figure out how to live and how to adjust and how to build our homes and how to prepare for... Um, potentially catastrophic events yeah uh, and also you know physically prepare right in, in terms of infrastructure but also emotionally mm -hmm. what does um you know what what the, what is society going to look like when we have real food shortages because we can't grow you know either either there's a power outage and you know you, we can't irrigate we can't um fuel our trucks to transport food we're so reliant on this mm -hmm. sort of like resource-based economy that once those resources go away or they can't be accessed what happens so it would be very interesting to see um but you can practice i mean i feel like you know i actually wrote down as i was just thinking i was like sort of you know mike one thing i want to ask you is about like daily routines and sometimes i think about um in terms of like preparing for not the worst mm -hmm. but preparing for adversity mm -hmm. yeah. and like getting ready for things that may be bad um and tooling up in an emotional sense to be able to deal with that right. so when something bad does happen yes it's like it's like okay i think i got this because i've thought about it for a while i haven't freaked out i haven't been alarmist but sort of like foreseen it I, you know if just to dip into the dog thing very quickly it's like you know, if something happens and I don't see it, shame on me. Because I should, I, I should be able to see everything. When I'm with my dog, I should be able to see everything. I should be able to see that person coming, that dog 200 feet away. Yeah. Um, and prepare for it. So when the dog does, you know, if I'm startled by something, that's my mistake. Right. So maybe we need to start thinking about lives as if, like, like get ready for all these possibilities. Um, without, without losing our minds over it and losing sleep and losing being in a moment because you gotta i guess you gotta have to you have to draw that balance between a future-oriented mind yeah, yeah, yeah. and a present mind mm -hmm.